Hello and welcome to this video on quantum physics. I'm going to give a very basic understanding and introduction to quantum physics because it has a, great, a very large bearing on understanding illness and health. We live in a universe with certain laws, physical laws. And for example, if something is alive, there is movement. And when there is no movement, then often we can say, well, for a human being anyway, that there is, there is no aliveness there. It is not alive. And so one of the key aspects here is this element of movement. And a human being is made up, and I've said this before, of four core quadrants. And those quadrants are our physical body, our emotional self, our mental self and our spiritual self. So we tend to think of ourselves as having a physical body because we can see that and we can feel it and touch it, it's very solid. And then we have our mental part of ourself which we could say is our thoughts and what goes on inside our mind and we could include our beliefs and our patterning and our habits. This is all what we would call our, our mental self the mental part of us and then we have our emotions which are more to do with how we feel and they're more of a visceral experience they tend to be more <clears throat> in the body experienced inside the body I don't know if you've noticed that that your thoughts tend to be more up in your head it's not like your toe is thinking and your emotions are felt more inside the body so for example if we feel angry then we're going to feel it probably in a certain part of our body and if we feel worried, then we might feel it in another part of our body. And if you've never really thought about feeling emotions in different parts of your body, as you become more emotionally aware, you're going to start noticing this. Because emotions directly relate to different organs. Uh, for example, that's why we say I was livid with anger, because uh, anger is connected with the liver. So emotions do arise. Uh, from the body and Dr. Mickle used to say emotions arise as waves of truth from within the body and Then of course lastly our, our spiritual self um, which is all to do with whatever our higher values are and our beliefs and paradigms around life uh, what is life really about and and our values in life so anyway coming back to quantum physics emotions <coughs> should be in motion. Um, one of the problems that, and reasons why people actually end up with symptoms is because this, this energy of emotions is not in motion. It's getting stuck. And what we can say is that, I'll come back to that in a second, just coming back to expl the explanation of quantum physics, what scientists have discovered is that rather than everything being solid matter as what we tend to think it is like so I, I look at my body and I think it's really solid or I look at this whiteboard and I think it's really solid or I go outside and I touch a tree and it feels and looks very solid what science has now proven beyond a shadow of a doubt is that actually everything is energy so everything including emotions, because emotions are also a form of energy. Everything is energy. So, for example, the way they've discovered this is, that, is, by, putting, is by putting atoms and molecules and cells uh, under a microscope. So, molecules make up a cell and atoms make up molecules and, and so we get smaller and smaller and smaller. So essentially our, our human body as an organism, we're made up of trillions of cells. And some of those cells come together and they form an organ, for example, like the liver, and some other cells come together and they form an organ like the heart. And then we have certain cells which come together to form tissues like muscle tissue or bones or fascia or whatever. So we have all these different types of physical tissues and organs inside our body. But essentially these organs are a bunch of cells. And then if we go down and we magnify, then those cells become molecules and then they become atoms 
and electrons and protons and, and then we start getting into you know physics which to be honest was one of my weaker subjects at school and so it you know and, and cells working at cells is all about chemistry uh, when we when we get when we're working at a cellular level so so we have the chemistry of things and we have the physics of things and then we have the quantum physics of things and quantum means getting down to to, to the smallest particle of matter or or energy that can be identified. So for example, if you put a cell of a human being under a microscope and you magnify it a million times, it no longer looks like physical matter. It looks like energy. And this can be quite uh, confusing to the mind, to the mental part of ourself, because it doesn't really make sense. It's like I, I look so solid on the surface and yet what are you saying to me? Are you saying that really I'm not solid? And, we, and yes, that's what scientists have now proven is that actually even though we look solid, we are made of energy. So I just want to read you a little paragraph from this book which was probably one of the first books that I came across several years ago when the film came out. Uh, you may have heard of it called What the Bleep Do We Know? And I can't remember, it's probably at least 10, 15 years ago, that the, 15 years ago at least I would say that this film came out. And it says, mind boggle number one, empty space. <clears throat> one of the first cracks in the structure of Newtonian physics was the discovery that atoms, the supposedly solid building blocks of the physical universe, were mostly made up of empty space. How empty? If we use a basketball to represent the nucleus of a hydrogen atom, this, the electrons circling it would be about 20 miles away, and everything in between would be empty. So as you look around, remember that what really is there are tiny, tiny points of matter surrounded by nothing. So what that is saying is that if you have uh, as they say, like a basketball in the, in, in the center, which is the nucleus, and then you have the, the electrons circling around on the outside of that, um, that molecule, everything in between is empty space. And so most of, most of it is, is empty space. <laughs> and we don't tend to, to consider ourselves like that. Uh, and, and it goes on. So that supposed emptiness is not empty at all. It contains enormous quantities of subtle, powerful energy. We know energy increases as we go to subtler levels of matter, nuclear energy being a million times more powerful than chemical energy, for example. Scientists now say there is more energy in one cubic centimeter of empty space, which is about the size of a marble, than in all the matter of the known universe. Not only is there space between particles, but as scientists probed more deeply into the atom, they found that the subatomic particles, the constituents of the atoms, are not sol solid either. They appear also to have a dual nature. Depending on how we look at them, they can behave either as particles or as waves. So in other words, either solid matter or, or energy. Particles can be described as separate solid objects within specific locations in space. Waves, on the other hand, are not localized or solid, but they are spread out like sound waves or the waves in water. As waves, electrons or photons have no precise location, but exist as probability fields. As particles, the probability field collapses into a solid object locatable in a specific place and time. So I'll just say that one again. As waves, electrons or photons have no precise location, but they exist as probability fields. They exist as a probability. As particles, the probability field collapses into a solid object locatable in a specific place and time. So that's going actually quite in depth and, and starting to talk about how something can actually come into existence just by being given attention which is a pretty big thing, which is why they found that when they do experiments, when scientists do experiments, the experiment will change according to the observations of the scientist. 
So according to the consciousness and the observations of the scientists, the results will change. So a different scientist doing the same experiment may well get different results. Right? So this is all pretty fascinating stuff because we're getting into the realm of consciousness and how consciousness affects our health, which of course at a simple level is all about how our mind and our emotions affect our physical body. Right? Because the physical body is the physical matter and the mental beliefs and thoughts and uh, paradigms about life and all our, all our patterning and our emotions, which are the feelings, these are more energetic, but they affect our physiology, all right? So one of the really interesting things about energy in general, the law of physics states that energy cannot be destroyed. Once it's created, it cannot be destroyed, but it can be transformed. So for example, water can turn into ice or steam, but it just doesn't just disappear. And this is really important in terms of understanding Mickle therapy and understanding the enormous role that emotions play in creating debilitating symptoms. It's absolutely essential to understand how this emotional energy, remembering that emotions are really just a form of energy, how this energy can affect our physiology and our body. And I've worked with so many people who had debilitating pain, debilitating physical pain and debilitating physical fatigue, which seemed to have no apparent cause. And yet when we started looking at, okay, what is going on emotionally and mentally, and, and, and seeing the correlation between the cause and the effect, because what's happening emotionally and mentally we could say is more a cause and what is happening physically is an effect, it's an end result. When we start addressing the cause, which of course is what Mickle therapy is all about, and, and we change what's going on at that causal level, then the end result is going to change and the end result being the physical symptoms. So this is just a really quick but very essential introduction to quantum physics and how understanding that emotions are energy and that energy affects everything inside of us and very in particular affects our physiology and our physical being. And this is why often when we have a physical end result such as debilitating physical pain or fatigue, we're not gonna find the answer or the solution by trying to change something at a physical level because the cause of the problem is not happening at a physical level. The cause is happening mentally and emotionally. And even, you know, there's a connection in there spiritually because our, our spiritual self is to do with our values. So I hope this has been helpful and I look forward to talking with you in the next video.